بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد رسول الله I begin with the name of Allah all praise belongs to Allah and may peace and blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad for he is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Alhamdulillah what do we have here another verse looks like a long verse there's a lot of words a lot of uh, huruf a lot of uh, harakat consonants and vowels and letters so let's go through this word for word but before we do that I'll give you a story. I tell this story to my son all the time and he, he likes to hear this story. So about 15 years ago, I met one of my teachers. Uh, he's from Syria. And uh, at the time, I was uh, living in New York City, working nine to five, full-time job. And I remember I met him and I told him I want to learn Arabic, specifically the Arabic of the Quran. And he said, okay, mashallah, that's nice. But we really don't have time to learn everything. So either, either you can learn how to pronounce the Qur'an properly, or you can learn how to understand it when you recite it. So recite it properly with tajweed, or we can spend time just learning how to understand it. And I told him I would rather learn to understand rather than to learn how to recite. And I tell my son all the time that if I were given that chance again, I'd pick that again. I would pick it a hundred times over to know what I'm saying as I recite, as opposed to reciting nicely. Why am I telling you this story? Because if I can learn what this means, you see, I don't have any Arabic speaking people in my family. I don't even have Muslims in my family, aside from the family that I married into. From my biological relatives, nobody's Muslim but me. May Allah Ta'ala guide my family and all our families. But if I can get to a level where I can see this, I understand all of these words. This is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I can do this, you can do this. So let's go through this. This looks intimidating, right? This looks like very long, a lot of words, a lot of uh, tashkil, a lot of vowels and things. This is not so tough. I'll show you this is not so tough. Hua. Hmm? What's that word there? Hua. Damir. A damir. A pronoun. Every pronoun is a noun. First noun in the sentence, this must be the mubtada, meme for short. This is the subject matter. Huwa is the first word, this is the subject matter. He. He. Now, as the mubtada, as the subject, there's going to be information. He is something. Very clear. Hopefully this is very clear. He is something. What is he? Al-awwal. Al-awwal, the first. The first. Al-flam, this is clearly a noun. Dhamma, this means that this is in the halat rafa the nominative case. This is probably the khabar. He is the first. That is the information that is in this sentence. This is actually a sentence right here. Who al-awwal. He is the first. But as we see here, there are more letters here. Wa, and. This is uh, ma'atuf, and something else. He is the first, and what? Al-akhiru. Al-akhiru. Dhamma, dhamma. They are being connected by wa, and. He is this, and that. He is the first, and the last. Hmm? Al-akhir means the last. Keeps on going. Another wa. And again. Al-Zahiru. Dhamma. One more time. This combining with this, combining with this. He is the first and the last. And you can say the apparent. The one that you can tell. Something like that. Like it's very obvious. Al-Zahir. And then another wa for you. And one more time. And... Al-Batin. Al-Batin. Oh, the So this is being connected to this as well. He is the first, the last, the apparent, the hidden. Uh, he's apparent and hidden at the same time. How is this so? Well, let's explain this. Who is he? Hmm? Who is he? I think it's pretty obvious who he is in this verse of the Quran. Every damir is pointing to someone that's mentioned before or something that's mentioned before. 
who is being mentioned before. I'm sure if you look at the verse before this one in Surah Al-Hadid, you would see that it's referring to Allah, God. Hua is God in this particular verse of the Quran. God is the first and the last and the apparent and the hidden. This is the sentence, but this is added, this is added, this is added. He's this and that and that and that. He is the first, how so? When nothing existed, God existed. He is the first. He is the last. There will be a day when nothing exists except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mighty and majestic is He. He is the last. He is the apparent. Look at creation. It's so sophisticated. So everything is so harmonious and perfect and nice. Things like this don't just come out of nowhere. Creation must have a creator. It's obvious. It's so obvious that the people of the past, they didn't even need to be explained this. Like it's obvious. There is a higher power to all of this. He is a zahir. But he is also al batin We don't see him, do we? We don't see him. But we see the traces of his power, of his knowledge, of his will all around us in the creation. We don't see the creator, but we see the traces of the creator in the creation. This is the manifestation of Allah Ta'ala's attributes in the world around us. So he is apparent, he is also hidden. He is the first, he is also the last. Alhamdulillah. Hopefully that makes sense. This is the sentence. Add on, add on, add on. But the sentence keeps going. There's even more information. وَهُوَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٌ عَلِيمٌ But it ends there, so عَلِيم at the end of the sentence. And, and what? And, huwa, one more time. Who is huwa? The same huwa from here. And he, God, God Almighty. Now, this is the mubtada. This is the subject matter, just like it was a subject matter up here. It has to have a khabar, a predicate. Where is this predicate? Typically, the predicate is right after it. He is something. You see, very clear. He is this. He is that. Just like here. He is the first. There's the khabar. Is this the khabar? Probably not. It doesn't look like it's in the halatul rafa, the nominative case. Is this the khabar? Probably not. It's not in the, the nominative case either, the halatul rafa. This is probably the khabar. Double damma is a good sign that it's in the halatul rafa. So he... Word, word, khabar. See, see, see what happens there. This you would expect to be here. Wa huwa alim, and he is what? The knowledgeable. You can say the all-knowing, and he is the knowledgeable. That is the sentence, actually. That is the sentence. You can say technically he is knowledgeable. There is no the really. You can say. He is knowledgeable. That's probably the better translation. And he is knowledgeable. That's a sentence. Wahua alim. He is knowledgeable. Okay. Of course, there's more words here. B. You can say knowledgeable of or about kul every shay thing. And he. Of everything knowledgeable. Literally, that's the translation. But more fluidly, and he is knowledgeable of or over everything. It's not so difficult. Hopefully, it's not so difficult. If you've been following these videos since the beginning, maybe a long time ago, this was difficult. This should be very simple. This is a walk in the park. This is a park in the walk. It's very simple. Hua, Allah, is the first, the last, the apparent, the hidden, another sentence combined with wa and what else is he? He knowledgeable of everything. These are two jumla ismiyas, two nominal sentences combined with this wa here. And within the first sentence, there's a wa here and a wa here and a wa here. This is the khabar. This is appended to it. This is appended to it. This is appended to it. Alhamdulillah. Hopefully that's simple enough. Okay, another sentence. 
الله مولاكم وهو خير الناصرين الله مولاكم وهو خير الناصرين what do we have here الله the name of god almighty لفظ الجلاله the mighty name of god الله this is the name of an entity first word in the sentence this is a noun by the way first word in the sentence this must be the mubtada the, the, the subject matter Allah, God something. We can preemptively put is. God is something. This is what the sentence is going to be. God is something. What's following? Mawlakum. Mawlakum. Is this one word? Hopefully you can recognize this is not one word. By the fact that there's that word kum there. This is two words put together in any dafa. In any dafa. Mawla. How do we say that here? This is Maulan. Hmm? Plus Gum. Maulan. Does this word look usual? Does it look common? It doesn't. It is one of those Ism Maqsur, the truncated noun. You can tell by the Alif Maqsura. The 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 ya yeah with no dots. Maulan is the word. But because it's combined with gum, it becomes maula, and then the alif maqsura goes away, you're left with this alif. Strange things happen when you have a weak letter, a harf alla, in a word. This is one of those strange things. You would typically say maula, alif maqsura, but let's put a, a alif here because it's combined with a pronoun right after it. What does this mean? God is your, referring to plural, Plural people. Your, you can say, Mawla is protector. A person who literally, Waliya, means to be close to something. So he keeps you close. He protects you. Mawla, alhamdulillah. God is your protector. So this is the khabar right here. God is a protector, you can say. But then we put gum to say your protector. It's appending to, to, to Mawla. God is a protector. That's not the sentence. God is your protector, whoever is being addressed in this particular verse. Of course, this is referring to the believers. God is your protector. Is that the end of the verse? It keeps on going. Wahua khayrun nasirin. Wahua khayrun nasirin. Very similar phenomenon to the previous example. Wa. This is a sentence. Wa, another sentence. This sentence. And that sentence. Hua, one more time. Another damir. Every damir is pointing to someone who is it pointing to, obviously, is pointing back to God Himself, Allah, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. God is your protector, and He, God that is, is something else. What is this something else? This is the mubtada, the subject matter. Khair, khair. Notice, dhamma. This is probably the khabar. He is this. What is khair? And he is... Khair here means the best. The best. Now, before we explain that any further, look at the last word in the sentence. An-nasirin. An-nasirin. Is this a verb? A fi'l? Probably not. Is this a particle? Probably not. Way too many letters. Alif lam, this is clearly an ism, a noun. And then at the end you have ya and anun. This is clearly a noun. This is a plural noun at that. So what kind of word is this? Fa'il plus waw noon. But what happens when the fa'il and then a plural waw noon? is in different halat, different grammatical cases, sometimes you get a ya and a noon. Particularly when it's in the halatul nasab, the associative case, or halatul jar, the genitive case. Now, notice, there are no verbs in this entire structure here. No verbs whatsoever. And usually when a noun is in the halatul nasab, the associative case, it's describing a verb. There's no verb here. So maybe this is not in the halatul nasab. Maybe this is in the halatul jar, the genitive case. 
Now, if it's in the genitive case, maybe there's a B, maybe there's a ala, maybe there's a fin, a uh, fee, maybe there's a min, all these different particles. Maybe there's a an. Is there anything like that here? No, there's nothing like that here. So this is probably the second noun in any dafa. This is a noun. This is a noun. Hmm? Maybe that's the second noun in any dafa, and that's what it is. This is the second noun in any dafa. That's why this is in the halatul jar, the genitive case. So the X of Y. He is the best of helpers. Hmm? God is your protector, first sentence. And he is the best of helpers, second sentence, combined with wa and. Hmm? That's, that's what this is. Again, imagine, if you understand this, there was a time, a point in your life that you didn't understand this. And now you understand this. This is mashallah. This is blessing from Allah who is mawlakum. Who is your protector, your caretaker, you can say, your custodian, if you want a fancy word. Alhamdulillah. Okay, now we get into some fancy stuff here. Hunna libasun lakum wa antum libasun lahunna. Hunna libasun lakum wa antum libasun lahunna. If you read the Mus'haf, there's a shadda there and there's a shadda there. Why is there a shadda there and a shadda there? It has to do with the tanween, the noon sound, and the lamb here. So in tajweed, what do they say? The noon and the lamb, they're both tip of your tongue, right at the top of your the palate, the roof of your mouth. Very, very close. Noon, na na na, lamb, la la la, very close. And so in Tajweed, when you have these two letters close together, they put a shadda to kind of assimilate them, to combine them. And so that happens there, that happens here. Hmm? But we're not talking Tajweed. We're talking Arabic grammar, an So we can ignore the fact that in the Mus'haf there's a shadda, but if you took, take it literally without the, the rules of Tajweed, this is what it would look like. Hunna libasun lakum. Hunna libasun Lakum, of course, libasun lakum. But we're not reciting Quran, we're just looking at the, the meanings. Hunna. What is hunna? It is one of those pronouns, one of those domair. This is the mubtada, the subject matter. What does hunna mean? They, referring to females in the plural. They, referring to females. It's not mentioned. We'll get to that in a second, inshallah. Hunna, they. They are something. We can preemptively write are. This is this is how sentences work in the Arabic language. A jumla ismiya, nominal sentence, mubtada khabar. Subject predicate. They are something. What are they? Libas. Libasun. Hmm? Clearly a noun. Tanween. Nouns only take tanween. And it's in the halatu rafa, the nominative case. So this is clearly the sentence. This is a sentence right here. They are what? A garment. Libas means a garment. They are a garment. Sentence keeps on going though. But the, they are a garment is a full sentence. They are a garment. One word or two words here. Lakum. Hopefully you can recognize these are two words. La plus kum. They are a garment for you. Plural. Plural males. Gum is like antum. You. You guys, you can say. They are a garment for you. Let's pause there. Who is hunna? What are we talking about? Remember, every damir, every pronoun has to refer back to someone that you mentioned previously. Who is hunna? If you know this verse from Surah Al-Baqarah, a very famous verse, this is referring to the wives of the believers, the wives of the Muslims. They, the spouses of the believers, are a garment for you. That's what this is saying. They are a garment for you. How so? What is a garment? A garment, you wear it because it keeps you warm. It keeps you dry if it's wet outside. It protects you from the elements. Not only that, it feels good. If you have a very comfortable sweater, for example, it feels nice. 
just wearing it. It, it feels it, it, like tangibly, it feels nice. In addition to that, it also looks nice. You see, when you wear nice clothes, nice fabrics, nice colors, it looks nice. Your spouses are like that for you. You males, ma we're talking about male believers. Your spouses are like that for you. They protect you from the outside world. They hide your indecencies. The things you don't want the people outside to see, they, they hide that from you. They, they hide that for you, your wives. They also look nice with you. <laughs> if you ever see a couple who are in love, who like each other, they, they, like, like, they light up the room. When you see a, a, a couple that, that they're like a garment to one another. They are a garment for you in all these ways. They protect you. They cover your uh, things that you don't want to be seen from others. And they look nice with you as well. Does the sentence end there? It keeps on going. Wa. Another sentence. Sentence. One more sentence. Wa antum. Wa antum. Hmm? And antum is a pronoun. It's a damir. Who is it referring to? Again, if you read the previous verses, you would understand that antum is referring to the believers, the male believers specifically. And you. And you. What about you? This is the muptida. Libas. Are a garment. Hmm? They are a garment. You are a garment too. For who? Lehunna. Just like lakum lahunna, for them. So this is mutual. There's a reciprocity here. They are a garment for you. They protect you. They make you feel nice. They cover your indecencies, the things you don't want to the public to see. They also look nice with you, and likewise you for them. This is showing the believers how to be with their spouses, or at least how they should be. May Allah Taala guide us all. The believers should be like that to their spouses. Their spouses should be like that to them. Now, I want you to notice something. This goes beyond Nahu, but uh, sometimes it's nice to talk about things beyond Nahu. Hunna libas. Hunna is referring to people, women specifically. Libas is a garment. They are a garment. This is not meant literally. What they say, haqiqatan, like literally in a sense. This is what's called in Balagha, in Arabic rhetoric, a majaz. What is a majaz? A metaphor. It's when you compare two things, but they're not the same. They're not the same. These people are a garment. People are not garments. You see, they're, they're two separate things. They're two separate types of categories. People are not garments. This is a majaz. And deep down, every single majaz, every single metaphor is a tashbih. Maybe we'll talk about this in some other course at some point. Tashbih is a simile. Is when you say, for example, you are like this. You are like that. That is like that. This is like this. This is the tashbih. Because what you're really saying is they are like a garment. But you're taking away like. And you're saying they are a garment. This is what a metaphor is. And subhanAllah, this is what a metaphor and a simile is in Arabic, just like in English, just like in Spanish. In most languages, metaphors and similes work just like this. You take away the, uh, the, the thing that says like, like they are like this, and you just say they are this. It's for emphasis. They are a garment. In what way? They protect you. They cover up your indecencies. They feel nice, they look nice, all these different aspects of a garment, they are a garment. But it's really a simile at the same time. Alhamdulillah. So this is beyond Nahu, but sometimes it's good to uh, venture outside of Nahu once in a while. So this is from Surah Al-Baqarah. And the last verse for you. Narzuquhum wa iyyakum. Narzuquhum wa iyyakum. What do we have here? Hmm? It looks like one big jumble of letters. <laughs> is it one word? Is it two words? It's, it seems to be uh, hard to decipher. Let's decipher this. Here, is this one word? What do you think? 
It ends with hum, and we know that hum is a pronoun, typically, although you might see it in, within a noun or a verb. But this word is so long. This is probably not one word. Like, there's so many letters here. It just looks like a big jumble of letters. These are two words. This is a namir. So that means hum is one word plus this one. What do we have? Narzuku. Narzuku. Hmm? Does this look like a noun? No aliflam, no tanween, no tamar buta. It's not a harf, it's not a particle because it's one, two, three, four letters. Particles don't have so many letters. This is what? This is a fi'al, a verb. Hmm? This is a fi'al. What does narzuku mean? Hmm? We provide. We provide. In the present tense. This is a fi'al mudara, present future, future tense verb. We provide, we provide what? Hmm? We provide to whom? Whom? To whom? To whom? If you want a little play on words. To whom? To whom? We provide to them. We provide them. That's what this is. Two words. First one, we provide. Second one, them. Notice, the first word is a fi'l. This is a jumla fi'liya, a verbal sentence. We provide them. That is a, that's a sentence right there. We provide them. Whether it sounds complete or not, it is a sentence. Now, when we say we, who are we referring to here? This is also from the Quran, so you can probably guess we is referring to God Almighty. He's referring to himself in the majestic form, we provide. You, say, you see this a lot in the Quran. When Allah Ta'ala talks about majestic things, like creating the universe, creating the heavens, the earth, providing for his creatures, we do this. We created this. We created that. Referring to God himself in the majestic form, like a king. Like a king, what they say in the, uh, the movies, we are not amused. You see, the king is talking, but it's as if he's talking about himself and his entire kingdom. We are not amused because the king is so majestic. He can talk like that. Allah Ta'ala is speaking in the form of a king. We provide. We provide. Now we said hum is a damir, a pronoun. Every pronoun refers to someone that's, that's mentioned before. Who is this be referring to? This them. We provide them. Hmm? You can say we provide for them if you want to make it a little bit more, a better translation. We provide them. We provide for them. Who is them? If you know this verse of the Quran, this is a very sad verse. This is referring to the the folks of uh, Arabia, ancient Arabia, particularly the uh, the Mushrikun, the uh, the polytheists before Islam, when they would have children, sometimes the people would fear that they don't have enough provisions for their children. So they would actually kill their children. May Allah Ta'ala protect us and protect our children. Out of fear of poverty, some of these folks, they would kill their children. They might even, subhanAllah, they might even bury them alive sometimes. May Allah Ta'ala protect us from such things. Allah Ta'ala is saying, we provide for them. Don't fear poverty. We provide for them. Allah Ta'ala is the creator of everything. We will provide for those children. Again, this is a full sentence. But in case you don't think that's true, maybe you don't think that's true. We provide for them. The sentence keeps going. Wa. And. And. Iyakum. Very interesting pronoun. We talked about this a long time ago. This pronoun doesn't come up a lot, but it comes up from time to time. Iyakum. This is when the pronoun is what? In the halatun nasab, the associative case, meaning it's receiving an action, but the action is not mentioned. Like, what, what, what? And you. What about you? Hmm? There's a, a bit of a gap there. We provide for them, we provide them, and you. There's something implied here. What's implied here? A fi'l. What fi'l is being implied? 
you can sort of figure it out. We provide for them, we provide them, and we provide you. We provide for you. This iyakum, like iyaka in Surah Al Fatiha, iyaka na'bud wa iyaka nasta'in. Iyakum is what? You are receiving the action of a fi'l. It's just that the fi'l is not being mentioned. Why? So that you can figure it out on your own. We provide for them and you. Meaning we provide for them and we provide for you. That is what this verse of the Quran is saying. Don't fear poverty for your children. Why? Because we provide for them. You don't believe us that we provide for them? We provide for you too. Huh? Where, do you, where, where do you think you get your food from? And your clothing? And your protection? And your security? And all the things that you need? It comes from Allah. Hmm? Or does it come from you? It comes from Allah. And you might uh, protest and say, no, it comes from me. Okay. When you were from zero to 15 years old, when you were born all the way to the age of about 15, where did you get your food from? Hmm? Your clothing, your protection, your shelter. From you? You're a child. You don't know what you were doing. Someone was feeding you. Someone was sheltering you. Someone was clothing you. That was Allah Ta'ala, God Almighty. Of course, through the esbab, through the means of your family and your parents and your friends and your, your uncles and aunts. But the, the source of all this protection and provision and food is Allah. He provided for you when you couldn't even provide for yourself. He'll provide for your children too. He'll provide for your children too. Alhamdulillah. You see. It's a very beautiful verse because it doesn't tell you straight up like the fi'l. We provide for them and we provide for you. No, we provide for them and you. Think about it. Oh yeah, Allah provides for me too. He provides for me too. Subhanallah. And another thing, to kind of get deeper into this, you know, when we say narzuqu, we provide, the first thing that comes into your mind as the listener is mal. Mal means wealth. We provide wealth. Or you can say fulus, money. You can say... Anything that has to do with, uh, you know, the tangible goods that we need. But when you talk about risk, uh, sustenance, or provision, this isn't just money. The ulama, they say that risk is anything of benefit in this life, including ilm, knowledge, including hidayah, guidance, anything of benefit. You know, subhanAllah, I know a lot of people go through this. Uh, me and my wife, before we had children, we thought to ourselves, do we really want to have children in this world that we live in? You see, this world is very uh, unseemly. There's a lot of things happening, unfortunately. Do we really want to raise children? Can we raise children in this world of ours as it is today? This verse is saying, don't worry about it. Have those kids. Not just money. We're talking about ilm. Knowledge. We're talking about hidayah, guidance. Yes, there's a lot of things out there in the world that can misguide people. But you, if you are a believer, who gave you this knowledge that you have? Who gave you this hidayah, this guidance that you have? Did you give it to yourself? No. Allah Ta'ala gave it to you. He gave it to you, He'll give it to your children. He gives it to your children, He gives it to you. Narzuquhum. We provide for them just like you. You think you were born with knowledge? You think you were born with, uh, with guidance? Hidayah? No. Someone gave this to you. The same one who gave it to you, he will give it to your children. So have those children. Alhamdulillah. So this is a bit, uh, a bit of a tafsir bil ishara. They say tafsir bil ishara, like an elusive interpretation. Because rizq, the first thing that comes to your mind is money. But rizq, sustenance, provision, is not just money. Knowledge, guidance, protection, shelter, all these things. Allah Ta'ala will provide for them just like He provided for you in case you don't believe that He will provide for your children. Alhamdulillah. So that's that. Hopefully you are benefiting from this. And again, I'll, I'll say what I said at the beginning. If I can learn this, having no Muslim background, no Arabic background, if I can see this and make sense of this, you can see this and make sense of this. It just takes a little bit of practice. And a little bit of diligence, alhamdulillah. And a little bit of rizq. A little bit of provision, sustenance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. 
Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ala ushabihi wa ala itba'ihi hatta yamil qiyamati wa salam taslimin kathirah.